Hi, and welcome to Nollywood Film Club. I'm Mr. C of Eroka Critic. How are you doing? I hope you're doing well. Yes, so one more week till the live spaces resume. If you have been missing us on that, we will be back next week. But this week, I bring you a conversation I had very recently. This is not a podcast from... Um, from the past. It's not one of those blasts from the past episodes. This is a conversation I had with hopefully our friends, if I can call them that at this point, um, the, the Nollywood Ramblers. Um, there are fellow Nollywood podcasters and I've been listening to their podcast and uh, I wanted to sort of have conversations with them. I think anyone who finds Nollywood Film Club it's a bit more harsh. Might find um, I don't think they might be saying the Nollywood Ramblers more sympathetic. Um, I think I don't know. It depends. Depends on the <laughs> depends on the episode you catch them. Sure, but um, I just think they have a slightly different voice, and I'm all for more voices in the Nollywood spaces. Um, we are going to be discussing, for the most part, the highlights and lowlights of um, 2023. It's a conversation I think we've had on Nollywood Film Club, but obviously um, uh, not. I didn't have it with the Nollywood Ramblers, and um, I probably have more speaking, in t speaking time here, uh, probably more than I'd have preferred, to be honest. Um, but yeah, that's my thought. Um yeah, so watch out. I will be defending passports here again. I'll, I'll give a hot take. Uh, so watch out for that. Um, Timestamps will be uh, in the description, as always. I do have to say there are some sound issues. I have tried my best to fix them. Um, please make do with <laughs> what I've done. And if I might have messed it up even more, I don't think I have. But if you watch Nollywood, <laughs> this shouldn't be shouldn't be a big deal for you, to be honest. You're used to bad sound. All right, um, please. I do hope you enjoy um, my discussion with the Nollywood Ramblers. Um, okay, do you guys uh, guys want to start by introducing? Well. You know what? I think because I've I've listened to all all of your podcasts. I think um, you guys have yeah. never done is um, of for obvious reasons because you guys are talking to yourselves and you guys know this. And obviously, the aim of the podcast is to talk about Nollywood movies. But I've 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 not really heard about yeah about you guys and how you uh, decide to start the pod or how that how the pod came about. So I'm interested in that. I mean, since you want to tell the story, should I tell it? <laughs> okay, I'll start. Okay, so, okay. um, Cordy and I are cousins, and ah. we have been wanting to do a podcast for years. When I say years, I mean, like, maybe, I think we first started, our, I think we did our first podcast in maybe 2019. Oh. No, before that, it was the one we tried to do in uni. Yes. Oh my so goodness. like ages, ages ago, and then we will try, and then we'll stop. I think mostly because Korea is in Doha, and we tried like different platforms. It just wasn't working. Then the time difference as well, and it was just it wasn't working. But then um, we watched Madame Coin Coin. And we were talking. Mm -mm, about, you watched Madame Koi Koi. I watched Madame Koi Koi. And I was like, okay, yeah. And I was like, Kori, have you watched Madame Koi Koi? And then we started talking about it. And then we were like, you know what? Let's, let's, let's record this. Because it was very, like, the function was very, very interesting. So, like, let's record this. And then we just, that's how we started. It was very random. Like, I, think, I think I reached out to you, like, two days before we started, like, recording. And then we decided to up. Yeah. <laughs> I literally got a text saying, I'm watching Madame Koi Koi. I need you to go and watch Madame Koi Koi. And next thing I know, we're recording a podcast. Exactly. Oh, wow. So okay. That's how we started. But it sounds like you guys have been playing with um, podcasting or recording uh, for a bit. Uh, uh, were the earlier iterations of this uh, always Nollywood focused or was it based on other things? I don't know. I'm trying to remember. 
it wasn't Nollywood. It was random stuff. Just random it was just stuff. random stuff. Yeah. But I have, so we have some um, background in media. Curry is a producer. Yeah. Yes. I, I was good. That was going to mean that because I've had, um, you know, I'm going to take my producer hat off. I was like, OK. <laughs> yeah, I, ha- I tend to have to do that a lot because I will be watching things and I'll see something and I'll be like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Yeah. And then I, I play a lot with media. I've I've worked in um, I don't even know how to explain this, but basically my dad is like a, on the media company. And I I just play a lot with different things. So, um, for a few for a few years, I did audio production for my church, and you know just play a lot with different tools. And yeah, that's just basically it. So starting the podcast wasn't like too difficult to for me to just because I do the production like the editing and stuff like that. So it wasn't too difficult. Okay. All right, cool. Uh, I, I'm it, look if you if you don't interject me, I would just be asking you guys questions because I'm just I'm just curious like that. Um, I know like uh, today we we want to discuss like 2023 of Nollywood movies. I would usually be here with Mrs. C, but Mrs. C uh, does have a migraine and she she's unfortunately unable to oh, join she us. Feels better, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I have questions though. Yeah. Sure, sure. Go but ahead. I've also Shoot. been listening to you guys for a while. <laughs> And <laughs> it's funny yes. because, like, um, when we started posting, I think you guys also posted on, on Mondays. And mm-hmm. there was this day that <laughs> I'm quoting. <laughs> there was this day that I <laughs> oh, I remember this day. I'm <laughs> I'm seven hours behind Nigeria, mm. so um, I would usually wake up and post like eight a.m. so that at least it drops the same day in Nigeria. Mm-hmm. But then I couldn't post and I had to go to work. So I'm not getting back from work till five, which is like mm-hmm. the next day, Niger- like midnight for Nigeria. Mm-hmm. And I was panicking. I was like, oh, Korea, I haven't posted, blah, blah, blah. I brought my laptop to work. Hopefully on my break, I'll be able to finish editing and posting. And then she was trying to reassure me. And then you guys posted. I was like, oh, your vocal critic has posted. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> So that was the weirdest day because she literally was having a full on meltdown. Yeah, I was like, Oh, we won't be able to post today. I'm so sad. But then eventually like I had to go on my break and then I posted. <laughs> oh, it, that's interesting. Okay, so like in terms of you know what, like the way I discovered you guys, by the way, is um I'm I am quite I'm quite obsessed with the Nollywood space. I'm trying to be anyway. I I I, mm-hmm. I dive into it more than most. And one of the things that I do check is the so ever since we joined the podcast space anyway. So I check the um the Nollywood film podcast charts and and that's why I saw you guys. Yeah. I was like, "Oh, another Nollywood. I, I I saw a bunch of other people, but the other people on there I, I know and I've spoken to. And then one day you guys popped up. I was like, "Oh, a new Nollywood um uh, uh Nollywood podcast in the charts." And I, and I, you know, I've listened to you guys for a, for a bit. One one of the things that happens is that sometimes people enter the space and because this is hard work and you know, it you yeah. know, after 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 a couple of episodes people stopped doing it um and but you yeah. guys had you had guys had gone in for a bit and part of my even reaching out is that hey i want to be able to give you guys all the encouragement you guys have to keep on doing this and so and i think some of that comes with if you keep on having people that are like hey you know this person is going to listen or this person is going to reach out or this person um is expecting it you feel more obligated on those days that it's it's harder to um record so yeah. that's that's part of why we're doing this and i think the more people in the space and i think uh especially people who have i think slightly more different voices um uh, different perspectives than than the ones um in in my immediate space anyway so that's why mm-hmm. that's why well, you know that's why i wish that anyway that's on that's why i discovered you from the chat thank so. you when you reached out yeah. It was That's like, interesting. I didn't even realize that. It was wild. I was like, Curtis sent me because Curtis handles our Twitter. So she sent me this screenshot and I was like, wait, 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 wait. 
<laughs> I was so blown. Yeah, I, I turned my phone off, turned it back on to make sure that the notification was correct. <laughs> then had a screenshot and then showed like two other people my phone. So I was like, I have to be sure. I told all my family members, I'm like, I finally said a podcast and somebody is like already reaching out to me. I'm so happy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, I, I, I no, it was, it was definitely a highlight. Oh, that's 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 cool and weird to hear because it really feels like um I guess we started we started the spaces maybe in 2021. We've been existing as Iroko Critic since maybe 2019 um uh, yeah. on the YouTube channel. So Yeah, I watch on um, YouTube as well. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. I love so, the YouTube. I miss I miss the good bad and and, yes. and the technical. I really do. All right. Uh, we, we will. I've said we'll we'll get to this. Uh, <laughs> our fingers crossed. We'll get back to our YouTube page um, this week. But thank you guys. That's that's very kind. Um, um, and uh, Mr. C, I'm sure we'll, we'll listen to this and she'll appreciate all of that as well. But um, anyway, uh, I, I one of the reasons again, I wish that I can hear passion in the way you guys discuss um, things and. And I, that's all, that's pretty, particularly all I care about really is like, I want more people who yeah. um, are discussing Nollywood and, you know, despite what um, some, and I would say some, some Nollywood filmmakers think about, about us, I am happy to, um, I'm, I'm happy to, I'm just happy for more people to be in this space where um, Nollywood is being platformed. Um, <laughs> but yeah, all right. Um, do we do we want to uh, start our discussions of what we think some of uh, uh, the Nollywood movies in twenty twenty three? Or if you have more questions or anything like that, like I, I, there's no real strict format for this. Uh, you guys just uh, if any questions come across, um, like enters your head as as we're going, feel free. But um, I I'm have sorry. a question actually. Yes. Yeah, okay. Shoot. Do you guys work in media? No, we we don't. Uh, we we don't. Uh, really? No, 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 not at all. Zero. Um, it's funny. Uh, I, I actually because I think one of sometimes we come off some. You guys will not be the first to do this. Some people, uh, uh, and it's understandable, but we get identified as critics, and we don't really think of ourselves like that. And I know. We're called Iroko Critic. I get it, but yeah. <laughs> one of the one of the reasons why we um, the the name was a little tongue in cheek um, when because for two reasons because um, there's a thing that uh, some people do um, where like we're reviewers and nobody cares at mm-hmm. the end of the day. Everybody's going to call you a critic when when it when yeah. you start saying things that are negative about your film. So one of yeah. the things. You know, our our aliases are Mr. Critic and Mrs. Critic. It's completely like, yes, yes, I get it. This is the name that we're we're always going to be. This is this is part of our like leaning into it, and that's some things that I'll I'll do. You see, in some of my works, and I don't shy away from some terms that uh, some people will tend to see as more um, negative. But like I'm. I would mm-hmm. probably identify. The only thing is that I think I'm quite a. I, I would say I'm a strong film enthusiast, right? I've been watching yeah. films intentionally, like and and like being quite. You know, I follow directors, and I've been like watching like breakdowns and listening to breakdowns, reading books. I've just been in that space, yeah. so I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Um, classically trained in any of the media stuff but i have consumed yeah. many many um hours of like uh, film content and and that kind of stuff and uh, uh i think what tends to happen is that people some of these things rub off um in the nollywood film club space where you have we have different people from different eras uh, oh, that's different eras that makes it sound like like some people are really old and some people are really young but from different <laughs> i meant i meant different backgrounds and like yeah. people have real special uh, yeah. specialists like we have a someone who's like really into fashion um we have somebody who is really like her old nollywood knowledge is so deep and uh mm. you know and and some people are like really into like uh, houses side of Nollywood. Some people are into the Yoruba side of Nollywood. Um, so like 
essentially all of these yeah. things tend to rub off and what uh keeps on happening is everybody becomes just a bit a bit more versed in 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 um a wider version of nollywood so so yeah essentially you tend to soak up a bit more knowledge the more you sort of find yourself in in, in the in the in the uh well when you find yourself amongst these people that's that's generally what happened uh has happened i would say and that's why we come off the way we we come off i think yeah that makes sense because there's some things that you see sometimes about like color grades and like the opening drone sequences which i agree with you i don't like those things i really really hate them but it's fine <laughs> yeah yeah i um, know it, it's just like uh, one of the things that uh i don't know like uh, some of those things uh, there are a couple of things that i i guess i i started noticing and then if when i start noticing it so i i would say even Iroko Critic, before Iroko Critic started, like, there was already an Iroko Critic in my head for about three years because yeah. I would, you know, you start, uh, you know, I start noticing anything and I start saying it to some of my friends and my friends would be like, hey, why don't you go and make your own and, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I can't wait to see your movies. Like, I, I, I don't actually have any plans of making a movie, but, um, uh, and then, uh, and then I, uh, you know, back then when I was just dating Mrs. Mrs. C now, uh, as she's known, um, you know, I I sat her down with, and we discussed uh, a couple, and then I, because uh, I think she's really entertaining, she's better spoken than I am. Um, I was like, oh, let's let's do let's do a review, and you know, we did sat down, did something much closer to what you guys are doing, um, and then mm-hmm. um, from there, I was just like, oh, maybe we can just make this a bit more uh, entertaining with the videos and like. And then it turned into writing scripts and then all the other things. So, yeah, um, uh, yeah. all those things like noticing um, drone shots. And uh, in fact, the, the mic, I, d- I don't know if you guys have seen the, the um, I, th- I think it's called, I haven't done it in a while, but the find the mic, there's a find the mic th- um, thread I have where I was just like uh, pointing out every time I've seen the mic in in uh in the nollywood films yeah 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 it's it's a it's a lot it's a lot it's it's every time like the the mic breaks the fourth wall either it's the mic or the shadow of the mic um that kind of thing yeah it's it's a lot and in films that you wouldn't even expect um yeah yeah so um i will say though i've held a boom mic before those things are heavy so i kind of get it sometimes but still i i know what you mean yes no uh, i i can imagine um the the you know i have i have only like again i just have an audience perspective of this you know and i guess my yeah. my thing would be um i don't see that in 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 most films i don't i don't see that in any yeah. films uh, especially in the late um since like 2015 i haven't seen that in like um western films or hollywood films or yeah um, so i would classify as serious films anymore um i i if you go to the 80s and the 90s i i could show you some of those things like we were watching colombo and i see it in some of the episodes in colombo i get that yeah um, but but um yeah, it's weird to see it in like 2023. In you know. it is, and there are ways around it. To be mm-hmm. honest, yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there, yeah, because there's editing software now to just uh, clone it out, and sometimes it's, it's just people missing it in 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 uh, QC. To be honest, yeah, yeah. But honestly, you don't even have to get to the point of QC. I feel like if you put the boom mic on a stand and you sort of frame it out, it will be fine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's framing out, yes, and there's also just, uh, yeah, cloning out if if something drops in in um in the in the show. Yeah, but in post. I, yeah, it's people. It is what it is. I, I I don't think it's it's not it's not like oh I think it doesn't it doesn't always necessarily detract from the movie. I don't think it detracts from much of the story because like it's a small thing. But I, I'm just saying, like yeah. you know, uh, if you think you've made a masterpiece and we're seeing the mics in your film, um, you know, you're, you know, just to show you where we are, it's kind of a grounding yeah. of, yeah, we're not, we're not there yet, um, because, but it's not to, it doesn't mean like the and the film is trash or anything. It's just like, yeah, we're we're still behind in a lot of areas, yeah, especially yeah. like so- sound, sound is sound is a big thing, but, but yeah. All right. 
any more any more okay. questions uh, no i think i'm questioned out okay uh if anything else comes out just just shout out um uh i'm happy to go into like some of uh our best films of 2023 if you, if you wanted to if you wanna, if you guys wanna discuss that, what are some of the films you guys enjoyed Is that from? The best? Uh, if, should we start with the worst and end with the best? I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> See, so, so it's a weird one because, funny enough, I think we had like a version of this in our heads for an episode that you know has gone into the ether that we will call a blessed uh, memory now, where we did like a good film, a bad film, and then a why was this made. Oh right! Oh, interesting. Okay, let's let's hear it. <laughs> I'm trying to do you know what your list of I think okay. So we started with the with the good because we always like to start with the good. Yeah, we did. <laughs> good. Um, and I'm so. Can go ahead and start with the good. My top one I remember was Gangs of Lagos. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And I think that was because I was like, I had so many good ones, but that was the one that like at the start of the year sort of revived my joy. In Nollywood. So that was my top one for the year. Yes. Cause I mean, there've been so many good movies over the past couple of years and bless our industry is getting so much better and I'm so proud. But I remember during the pandemic when they were filming Gangs of Vegas, I kept seeing like little snippets of like stuff that they were filming because I follow a lot of the cast and the crew. And I was like, ooh, what is this? But then I never saw anything. So I was like, okay, well, this is never coming out. And then the film came out and I was like, oh, this is that thing. Yeah. And watching it for me was the attention to detail was really good. For the most part. There were some, you know, but you know. I doubt Nollywood makers would film, would put so much budget into any movie and not release it. Yeah, but you know, you never know. There's some movies that are taking a million years to come out. Yeah, but they still come out. <laughs> yeah, that 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 Gangs of Lagos was. I think Gangs of Lagos was shot in. Oh, I'm trying to remember this. I'm. I might butcher the. It was year. either it might... 2020 at the height yeah. of the pandemic or the year after. Yeah, yeah. It was. It was a while ago. It was a while ago. So. Um, yeah, no, I I remember that because I know they shot it before they did Brotherhood, um, which came yeah. out. Mm. Yeah, which, first. Uh, yeah, which came out. First. And Brotherhood came out first, so that that confused me as well. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Um, I, I I one of the things I think we we discuss I think like it's good to see. I I thought Toby's performance in Brotherhood, um, for me was better, a, a little bit more nuanced. Um, he is able to carry a bit more emotion in his face, and I said, you know what, that's probably good for him because at least that is showing growth for me. I don't think the character, yeah. the the characters, maybe in Brotherhood were as. Um, I don't know if they were as clean or as um, interesting as they were in Gangs of Lagos, but I did like Toby's yeah. performance more. Um, yeah, G- Gangs of Lagos is a is a is an interesting one because I'm I'm a I think I'm a big fan of Daddy. I keep on saying this, <laughs> but sometimes when I say it, and then I was like, ah. all right. So when she writes and directs alone, I th- I'm almost yeah. I, I like those stuff much. better. I like this stuff better. Um, so this mm-hmm. one, she Gangs of Lagos, she co-wrote. And for me, like sometimes yeah. there's, you know, co-writing is difficult if, you know, you're, it's not someone you really know and trust. And I think yeah. writing is already an issue in Nigeria um, that d- two people co-writing a script is almost like that's 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 yeah. a difficult thing to do um and i think for me it it just should a little much i don't know if you guys have seen our gangs of lagos review on our youtube channel that's i mean i think all of our issues are very displayed there my biggest one was the third act which is just a nollywood thing um yeah at this point um uh just things just wrapping up a little too quickly and um i just think uh for me to- toby's character there i wish they gave him something some i wish they gave him something that just 
to do that would have been like, oh, that's a cool thing that he did that was, you know, intelligent or smart. Because, you know, they build him yeah. right from right from when he was a child, right? They tell him, oh, he's really clever. You know, and I'm waiting for yeah. I'm waiting for him to do this, you know, very clever thing that, you know. But like yeah. it just didn't come. And and in, in fact, I would say some of the things that happened were a little silly when, when he so um they uh, you know, like they got tricked into, oh, it was this person who, they essentially got tricked into a gang war, right? They got yeah. misled into yeah, a gang war. Exactly. Yes. And, you know, the fact that it took just somebody to sit them down and go, hey, why do you think it was us that did this? And just, you know, some things are just wrapped, being wrapped up a little too cute. Um, if it was all the convers, if it was just a conversation that was needed, it just seems like, that war just felt very much pointless and silly. Yeah. And the script did not seem aware of, you know, you can have pointless wars, but if the, the script didn't seem aware of it, it just felt like, all right, let's now, it's time for Toby to get on the right side and, you know, that kind of thing. But that's, yeah. <laughs> um, some, yeah, some issue. And then um, some of the action in the, in the last third, I think um, in, in our videos, we pointed out some some of the that rooftop thing. Um, there's some green screen stuff there that um, could have been better, but um, uh, it's uh, I, I don't you know. Like we're we're still new in the action game. I have some leeway for us, yeah. Um, but I guess even sometimes, even as a reviewer, even when I have leeway, I still have to go. You can still do this better, but it's not that big a deal. The bigger deal for me for gangs um, was just. The story didn't seem to have the that's heart en- the heart enough for me. Yeah, and that's going to be difficult when you have two writers for me. Um, it's always going to yeah because it's like it's the it's the hardest thing for us in Nollywood is getting the script right. Um, and and you know getting two people to put their brains together. I don't know. I, I mean, like it's difficult enough with one. Yeah. It's just like yeah. Anyway, <laughs> but I understand that, that's I, many I, people's I, favorite I, movie though. Many people's yeah. Movies up here. <laughs> Ironically, my issue with that movie wasn't even, it wasn't really the script. I mean, I, I see what you mean, and I understood a lot of, I understand a lot of, like, why those issues are issues. But for me, it was more lit, tinier things. Like, there's a there's a scene where, I think it's when, when I think it's when um, Elenio dies, where they're having the war. Mm. And it's like some of the costuming and the set design is just out of place because it's from the wrong era. Right, right, right. And there's a couple of stunts in there as well, especially at the end, that just the impact versus what happened don't match up. Mm -hmm. Just from like a logical perspective, those are my issues. But again, like you said, it's one of our sort of first-ish action, action movies. So it was one of those things where I was like, I can give it a pass. Yeah. Okay. No, that's, that's fair. That's fair. All right. What? Uh, any any other highlights of the year? Um, oh yeah, I, there are a lot of movies that I really loved this year. I really liked Black Book. Um, I thought that was really really good. Hmm. As usual, everything has its little minute issues here and there. Um, Blood Vessel was another good one. I think I gave it a five. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember. I remember listening to you guys. <laughs> I, remember, I was like, she gave it a what? I, so I think oh, I'm, I'm no. gonna forget. I'm gonna forget who somebody wanted to give it a ten, and uh, and yes, oh, yeah, she so wanted to give it a ten, and I thought she was she was <laughs> doing yes. the most. Yeah, yes. I was going to give my five to ten, but that's because so 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 when when we review or when. I review because currently she finds it very difficult sometimes. Not all the time, but sometimes she she wears her producer's hat and then she finds it difficult to take it off. But when I review, yeah, reviewing as a viewer, I review in the sense that oh, can I recommend this movie for somebody else to watch and they would like it? So yes, I gave it a ten, but we still spoke about some things that were a bit off. So it wasn't perfect, like ten over ten. But I could, I, yeah, I would definitely tell, like, my colleagues to watch it, like, and they're not Nigerian. Oh, no, I would tell everyone to watch it, but I'm sorry. And I keep saying this, it is a lot, and I feel like it's my thing. I just, I can't with that sound. Like, if the music does not work with the film, why is it there? 
Yeah, I remember. I remember this this conversation about about the music. <laughs> yes, um, I actually it's funny because I both said, um, I, I where I both said I liked some. I, I said I liked the score, but I actually know I. I absolutely know what you mean um Corridor, when you say you, you don't, yeah uh, yeah because like some some of the sounds were actually um some of them were were poorly used uh, uh i thought and actually this came up in a in a nollywood film club conversations where some people yes yeah, some people uh loved it this one was a polarizing one you actually had some people who loved it and you know and then you had some people who just did not like it at all but yeah. yes this was this was another one was where i think i'm you know what like i'm more interested in what um other people have to say about movies especially because i know what i already think about a movie but like i'm just interested yeah. in what other people have to think and i'm i'm always getting surprised by what people find um what people find that they like and what people i'm 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 always guessing right and wrong, right? Um, uh, I didn't, I didn't think people were gonna love Blood Vessels like they did because I, I, I didn't love it to be honest. Um, you know, and, but yeah, I didn't love it. But people what, love this film. They love this yeah, film. What I actually enjoyed about Blood Vessels, yeah, they did from the beginning was, I just feel like it was a different. It, it's it's a different story from what Nollywood would usually does sort of. yeah and from like from the beginning like even even when we watched the trailer i didn't even know what the, the trailer gave nothing away I, I was i was ready to not like it but Absolutely I, nothing. I actually really enjoyed it and i like the fact that there were new faces so i was trying to keep up because usually um i'm i'm more to like I, I don't watch another movie than just watching my life. Like I'm, I'm not focused on the movie. I'm doing something else because there's really nothing in the movie that's definitely going to grab my attention. But the fact that I'm not used to the faces, I'm not used to the voices. Sometimes I just find myself like looking at the screen, and um, even the story too was was just very interesting for me to follow. So I really enjoyed it. Um, yeah. No, yeah, I hear you on that, and uh, I think many people share your many people share your sen- sentiment on that. Um, Blood vessel was um, was one where people finally, uh, especially I think going to um, a, a place in Nigeria that isn't often talked about or discussed in Nigerian movies. Yeah. People like yeah, it's good representation on on, on one aspect. The other. For me, I have to say the blood vessel. I really thought I was. I thought I was going to like it a lot more after the first ten or fifteen minutes. Um, the part that I didn't seem to enjoy was everything on the ship. Um, uh, I yeah. <laughs> so the whole movie. <laughs> Just that's a different. That's a different movie. And I guess like yeah, you either like that part or you, or you don't. I, I you know like um, yeah. Uh, uh, did you do you do you know that Perry was in this movie? Uh, this is <laughs> yeah. I saw him and I was like, surely not. <laughs> you know the thing is, the thing is, I didn't even know. I knew him, but I didn't know him. So when I All saw right. the face, I was like, this guy is some like everybody. Okay, majority of the cast were new faces, so mm-hmm. he had like yeah two scenes, and I'm thinking this guy is not a new face. I don't know who he is, but I'm pretty sure I've seen him in other things so it was yeah he's our new amino who we don't like just like <laughs> floated in and floated out it was yeah. weird and there's some parts there some, definitely some parts in the movies that i rolled my eyes heavily because there's not there's definitely going to be those parts like and there's some plus there were some parts that were not properly explained that i feel like they could have you know explained it and when we watched when we did the review i sent the review to one of the the cast, somebody on the cast, and he sent a voice note back saying how they the movie was longer and they had to cut it for um, Netflix, so there were lots of things that were not properly explained. I was like, okay, cool. Like, um, you know, I think what was the name of the the man that brought them on the ship? Um, um what's his name, Mister? Oh, Lord, yeah, Mister P. Yeah, yeah, Mister P. So. 
Mr. Priest's story was just so confusing to me. I'm like, did he do it on purpose? Did he mm. actually have a heart attack? Did he like fake it? It was very confusing. So just little things like that could have been explained. Yeah, no, no, I, it makes, I guess that makes sense because, um, yeah, uh, the fact that I think nobody is clear, and I agree with you, it's not, it's not clear whether he meant to stiff them or if he actually had an issue. Uh, it's certainly not clear in the film, and I don't think that's intentional or it didn't, it didn't look intentional anyway. Um, and it's not that it's super important to the, plot but um it's 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 not important to the film happening it's just uh it's just an imp- important plot point to not be clear about if that makes sense if yeah. i'm not speaking out of both sides of my mouth it's not important because like you know it's it's one or the other right it's either he he um he did it intentionally or he didn't you know um but just yeah it's, it's you know one makes him kind of a bad bloke and the other one makes him a little unlucky and like uh yeah. that we that, that's not clear it's, yeah yeah and at the end i think it was Tikena that was all of a sudden alive so <laughs> explain that to <laughs> <laughs> yeah no but like we, we they showed us like a little flashback of what happened there it wasn't completely unknown what happened uh yeah, so, yeah. So, so light came through and like, and you know, he waved his hand and he was, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure how he found the, the sort of, uh, what, what would it, the bit of wreckage, uh, that was, um, that was, yeah, uh, floating atop that he hung on to, um, you know, like being shot in the knees, it's, uh, in the leg, it's gotta be, it's gotta be difficult. But I knew he was gonna survive once they decided that they weren't gonna kill him, they're gonna shoot him in the leg and throw him in the see i was like all right so he's fine yeah. because I, that's that's not a nollywood thing that's just a movie thing you know like if they don't kill somebody yeah. in front of you like the person is not dead you know usually Probably not dead yeah yeah um so you know they shot him in the leg and threw him and see it's uh it, yeah it's you know whatever you know movie when he survived he survived that's fine i just i couldn't take any of the things that happened in that in that film in on the ship seriously it, it seemed uh, uh yeah uh, the, the <laughs> that space they were in I, I i it looked like much bigger than um they were trying to let us believe um mm-hmm. yeah, uh, yeah. Because like at first, you know, when when Mr. P is looking down on them, you know, yeah. they're all they're, they're all, all looking up. bunched up. <laughs> oh, and then that's, and then there's a wide shot where you know they're all like Somebody's sitting, uh, yeah. Somebody's and then they have pacing. they have enough space to move the bucket, you know, mm, you know, yeah. kind of out of their shot. So yeah. um, I don't know. Yeah, and somebody's pacing, like you said, I don't know, like uh, a bunch of things were were happening. Just also just people's behavior on the ship i i wasn't a big fan of um the white dudes acting um it it was one of those ones where it would have been fine if if um with with a smaller role um i think as a main point he he just he lent very very into um the I'm a villain. <laughs> I'm a villain. It just looked like I'm a villain but like you know from a like a one of those B movies that you know, it goes straight to DVD, but <laughs> it's just, it's just, that's why it came up to me. Um, but yeah, um, hey, no, more power to uh, people that love it. I, I'm not, you know, like that's, that's the thing. We all see these things uh, differently and I'm always interested with it. Yeah. Um, I think that's, that's fascinating. It's a fascinating part of why I do this. this is why I don't think I'll ever get tired of doing this. It's like, I was like, oh, you saw that? Oh, I saw this. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Um, I think another one that was good, Breath of Life was good, but Breath of Life was kind of good and also kind of eh. Breath of right. Life. That's was, another one. Was so cool. Yes, I'm going to let you enjoy Breath of Life because that's a, that's a you one. Because I don't know if I like it or if I hate it. Like, I like it, but also I don't like it. I feel like they put in so much effort, but they didn't put in any effort as well. Like, it was so confusing for me. Because I didn't understand what time period we're in, like, for 90% of the movie. I still don't know what time period we're in, to be honest. 
Yeah. So this is one that actually confused. Um, I think we, Mrs. C and I were, were arguing about it. Well, not arguing. We're just like, wait, what time period is this? And, and um, we were unclear about it. And then we went back and I can't remember what it is, but they do tell you kind of what, they, they tell you what it is. It's just like you have to do maths. Um, yeah. So I think when they show you like 1954, they do like, I, th- I can't remember, they do X years later and then they do yeah. another X years later and you have to yeah. do that math. Yeah. Uh, to, we did to the f- math. We did <laughs> right. the math. We did the math because... And it still didn't make any sense. It still didn't make sense. Yeah, so- there, was, there, was, there was definitely a point where it... They messed... They must have messed up with some of the math because... Um, I, I remember, yeah, we did the maths as well. There was a point where um, uh, they're showing when, when he died and uh, it would have landed us, I think he died in like, I can't remember, 2004, 2005 or something like that. No, um, no. let me tell yeah. you, it wasn't. Let me, prom- I promise you it wasn't. Because uh, even without math, when Elijah, whatever his name was, yeah. was working for the man, uh, Wale Oji, I can't remember his name. Wale Oji was still using this rotatory phone. What, mm. what year? What year was that phone like, I... existing? Even the projector, he had to go to Lagos to find cord. But there's a Range Rover in somebody's house. Please yes. make it make sense. A brand because... new Range Rover, mind you, with a so... doorbell cam on the, on the door of the house. And solar panels. Yes, and... I... I... I definitely got messages about <laughs> exactly those things. Uh, the Range Rover really, really bothered some people. Uh, uh, no, a few people. You don't understand. I had to pause. I had to pause what I was watching because I thought I was seeing things. And I was at home at the time. So I showed it to my mom and I was like, is this me or is it a Range Rover? And like a new mm-hmm. Range Rover. And she goes, maybe it's an old model. You know, they release them all the time. I'm like, no, 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 no. Yeah. That is not an old model. Yeah. No. Because uh, tell me why Elijah was dressed like he was coming from the 1980s, where he's standing in this girl's house with her parents, and they have a standing speaker, like one of the new types that like really right, yeah, surround sound one. In the background. I was so confused. <laughs> and also, they needed a letter from the British Council to say that the land was not for sale. Yeah. If we've yeah. had independence yeah. for long enough at this yeah. point, that shouldn't matter. Yeah. Exactly. So it wasn't 2000 and anything. <laughs> it wasn't well, yeah. No, I, I I hear you. It wasn't. Um. Um. It wasn't. Oh well. Okay. Actually. So, what? Well, I, I I guess I'm. I, I'm saying that's what they were were claiming for it to be in any way. The the last. Yeah. The the last one because um on his gravestone I think it says he dies. On his gravestone, he says, like, you know, Reverend, what was his name? Timmy, right? Reverend Timmy. Yeah, something. Reverend Timmy. Right. Uh, you know, uh, date of birth to June 2003 or something. And by the way, at the beginning, they're standing in front of the wrong gravestone for some reason. <laughs> I, I, I don't know why. I, I, yeah. I, I, I have no idea what they're doing <laughs> because, like, they show, they show him standing in front of the gravestone and then they pan to the right and then that's the actual... Uh, that's the actual that's Reverend Timmy's actual grave I was like why is he standing in front of the wrong grave is it, <laughs> anyway but that aside uh, uh, that aside um, uh, yes we everybody had big issues with with you know, when they were supposed to be uh, the, the time they were supposed to be saying but um, I, I would say those are mistakes with the props but something that is a mistake with the timeline that they said is so this thing where it's supposed to be in 2003 why it was supposed to be dealing at, in 2003 they show yeah um they show when they did the the all the years later and it's supposed to be in 2003 but somewhere along the line um I think uh, Genevieve's character, I can't remember her name, um, says to um, the, 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 the guy, I can't remember anybody's name again, um, says, says that, um, oh, we've been dating for, over, uh, for, for a year. I was like, okay, well, if you're dating for over a year, it's not 2003 anymore. It's 2004. 2004. So, uh, uh, yeah, at the least. So the gravestone is, is wrong. So um, yeah, they, in terms of, uh, yeah, in terms of the 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 
the the timeline. You know it's think? definitely messed up. I think the 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 editors, like people that edited the movie, they overdid their job because the movie was just too bright and very very nice looking. And then the oh. people that they said did design underdid their job because <laughs> it's like they had more budget because and lower budget for <laughs> for sets because yeah. it was just it was it wasn't good. Yeah, somebody. No, I think at some point in the scripting phase, they just got confused, which fair enough. It was a lot of different timelines. Yeah. It's it's funny because I think uh, one of the one of the uh, color graders or the, the editor, you know, he was the editor of color graders, and he he um, somebody mentioned something about the color grading, and he wasn't happy. He was like, <laughs> he was like, <laughs> "Hey, did you watch ne- make ne- next time watch it on a on a TV and make sure you're watching in filmmaker mode?" And I was like, "Okay, all right." Okay, this is not. So we have to come to draft settings to enjoy the color grade, really. It's just, it's just, it's just a silly thing to say because, like, you can't. That's the, and this is one of the thing. So I, I actually, I actually have, especially when, uh, when I'm putting out a review, when I learned this, that yeah, there, there's some TVs I watch it on and it looks much worse than they are, and they, they have, I have two sources, two screens that I trust, right. I, I wouldn't do a review mm-hmm. of, of that, like one of our reviews on the channel. But you can't, that's because, you know, we're putting something out and we kind of care about some of these things. And But you can't go and tell everybody, there's, there's, there's nothing stopping anyone to watch it on whatever screen that they're watching it on. And like you said, our platform is for general audience members, right? Yeah. And I come to, and I yeah. do myself that even though I'm a critic, I do come to that as a, an audience member because I don't put in the same amount of work I would put in for um, uh, our videos if we're putting it, putting it up. It's just like, uh, just based on what I have seen, based on, you know, what I, you know, obviously audience members with different, uh, have different, knowledge of film and all of that but like it's still you know an audience member is still an audience member that the fact that i've seen a hundred films doesn't mean anything to the next person it's just you know that's my this is my experience somebody else's experience is their experience right so you can't blame somebody for watching it on whatever platform you made it available to watch it on right if somebody's watching on their phone they don't have filmmaker mode (laughs) oh man but yeah anyway that's a very funny thing to say yeah. I, I, I understand, I understand. I, uh, to some degree I understand I understand him because <laughs> it's him that edited it and uh, yeah um, creatives get precious about some of these things but yeah yeah we do we're, we're very very fragile people no one likes their work being diminished and I understand that but asking a regular person to watch something in cinema mode is a bit much <laughs> yeah yeah um, one of the films uh, we loved that we watched this year. Oh, well, I say we. It's actually just me because um, I don't think Mrs. C liked this film as much as The Trade. Um, I really enjoyed The I Trade. I The Trade. I, lo- I thought The Trade. I thought Love the Trade was the. Um, I thought. I th- I think that character is the best um, anti-hero. It's up there with the best anti-hero we've had since yeah. you know, King of Boys character. Um, I just yeah, think that guy is just gave him a well-rounded character, saw him as a father, saw him as like a... Um, uh, like a boyfriend, um, well, he had a side chick, um, saw him as the kidnapper, you know, I liked, I liked, yeah. uh, I liked that character, especially there. And that's a written solely by Jade character. That's what I mean when I say, yeah, I, I like Jade. That's what I mean. Yeah, I, I also I love Jade stuff, and I remember watching that movie the first time because ironically, the weekend I watched um, Gangs of Lagos was the same weekend that I watched The Trade. Mm. And I guess I think. I was at the, at first, obviously, I was very sort of in the hype of Gangs of Lagos, and I was very in love with that. So there was nothing anyone could tell me that was a superior mm. film, and that was what it was. And I remember I had a concern with my uncle, I think, and he was like, "Go and watch the trade again." And it was on the second watch that I understood, like it was such a brilliant film. Yeah, I'm with you there. That's uh, that's I think outside of Mammy Water, which I saw in cinemas, um, I think that's my Lucky. favorite. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was, it was on, and I had to, I had to go see it. And um, that's, yeah, that's one of my favorite Nollywood experiences. It, I think it was, I'd say, my second favorite Nollywood experience of all time. And the first one mm. was watching. Ah, I, this is a film that I, I was, I was going to say you guys need to talk about on your channel when you, you, you dis- um, discuss it when you watch it. It's uh, Ayuma Fair. I don't yeah. know if you guys have seen it. You guys have to. You guys have. Have you guys seen Ayuma Fair? No, oh, no, I no, have not seen that yet. It's on Prime. Um, it's like it, okay. when I say when I say it's a good film, I don't mean for Nollywood. I say I mean it's a good film. Good film. It's sitting up there with me with uh, with any top dramas of the for me in the last. Uh, uh, that, uh, I say in the top, my top twenty dramas in the last ten years, I would say, like not oh, interesting. Not, yeah, yeah, very, very, very good film. We'll definitely yeah. add that to the list. Yeah. So yeah, that that that's my. Those are my. Those were my highlights. Um, I don't know if there's any anything else you guys wanted to point out, or if you want to move to low lights, <laughs> or the uh, or how did you put it? The films. Who, like, what were they thinking? <laughs> The ones that shouldn't have been made. <laughs> uh, the ones that shouldn't have been made. All right. Um, oh, before before we move off the... Uh, I always almost forget yeah. this because p- people... People shamed us for liking this film. And I, I, I don't, you know, this is, again, this is why I say film is different. Some, some people gravitate to some things. I liked Passport. I liked Passport a lot. We were the only one in Nollywood Film Club that, that liked that film. Um, but yeah, we still like right on. We, I, I just think... This Mercy is why Jones. I say I did not finish Passport. <laughs> yeah, I didn't finish either. I was, I, I was, I was just going, I was, I started. I couldn't do it. I see? I love Passport. I think Passport has, so like, I think Mercy Johnson as well, Mercy Johnson's character up there is yeah. after, after <laughs> this is going to be a crazy claim, but I can defend it. I think after, after, after King of Boys, after Elik, after Elik from the trade, I think you have to put <laughs> Mercy Johnson up there as, as a, as the third most well-rounded anti, I would call her an anti-hero because she's not a good person. Um, she makes fun of, she makes fun of like, uh, she makes fun of a stutterer. Um, she's, uh, she like uh, be physically abuses her sister. She's not a good person. She's, you know, I agree with, with, she's obviously belongs to a life where um, that is quite different from um, Jim Ike's, Jim Ike's character's one. All right. So, Obviously, Passport is far from a perfect film. It has, it yeah. has, um, it, has um, it has a bunch of issues, uh, production-wise, definitely. And Jim Ike is definitely too old to be playing the character he's playing. Um, <laughs> Uh, definitely at least 10 years too old to play the character he's playing um and whilst i don't see uh while i don't have that view i can see some people who have been watching messi johnson play this a version of this character um of for for a while getting being tired of it i don't know whether it's because i haven't seen it in some time um that it it the stuff that landed for me better, but um, I just think the writing actually is just is much better than a lot a bunch of writing that I've seen um, uh, in in a lot of Nollywood. Um, the story is clear. Um, the the motivations are very clear for me. Uh, the and the important plot points for me. The important plot points for me are also. Uh, well done. Um, there, mm-hmm. There's so many places in Nollywood where these. So I'll take it for 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 example, the way his bag gets stolen, the way he gets um, Jemaik get involved in gets involved in um, Mercy Johnson's world. There's so many different films where they would have just half asked that, and you know, like Ty gets Ty gets. Um, you know his tie gets flat in in this area. They don't have a spare. That's very normal in Nigeria. Um, yeah, and, and uh, they get stuck in in this side. And because they've had already written that, um, Mr. Johnson's sister, I can't remember her name, um, is is a bit. They're in a sticky position to to um, find money for her mom's treatment. Uh, they go. 
you know, like so she's 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 her hand is <laughs> her hand is a bit a bit more sticky, right? And that's where she she she's you know she's looking to steal more. She's a bit more inclined to steal, and even before that, like even the way even the way um, the sister discovers that her mom is ill, I love it. Like um, she's trying to. I can't remember what she was trying to take from the room. Um, she's trying to sneak out from her mom's room with, I don't know whether it was a football, right? You know, and she's trying yeah. to sneak out and she accidentally kicks something. And she's like, oh no, my mom's going to get me because, you know, and she, but her mom doesn't move. And uh, she almost wants to keep on going, but she's like, that's not normal. And she goes to check on her mom. I was like, this kind of writing I don't see in Nollywood I'm sorry like these are like really yeah. good ways to go oh my, something's up with my mom that's not the mom I know and they don't have to say a word they just you know do it and then you find out her mom is sick so I think there's a lot that I yeah anyway I know it's not everybody's cup of tea but I'm just saying yeah, I love I love I like we need to go back and we need hey, to go back and actually like watch it and finish it I will I will warn you <laughs> That a lot of people still don't like the movie. I'm just saying, um, in terms of okay. the writing, I think um, I think it's it's still up there. And I love what Mrs. Johnson's character does when she s- switches from that funny to dram- dramatic. I just nobody else does it like her. That's it's it's yeah, it's no. crazy. It's crazy the the talent she has there. But yeah, that's my other thing. I I, I like that. All right, okay, that's my last one uh, for things that I liked from last year. Although I think technically, well, yeah, there's one more, but because it just came out on Prime this week, I'm going to leave it alone. And also, I need to watch it first, so I'm just going to leave that one alone for now. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Um, uh, so the ones we didn't films that should never have been made. What Ooh. they're thinking? Um, I, I don't know. This this oh. is a huge list for me. Um, <laughs> Huge list for me. Um, I'll let you guys go first. So I I do not remember if a Sunday affair actually came out last year or not, but I'm adding it to the list because why? <laughs> yeah, no. that film has it's so many this. questions. It's Sunday affair. It's Sunday affair. A lot of people really I'm don't surprised. Like. I thought you liked that movie. I liked it, but I still have questions. <laughs> It's on a fair lot of people. Um, I think no, no, that that one has a really low um, NFC score actually. So a lot of people did not like that film from 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 us. But I I I wouldn't put that as my yeah uh, I wouldn't put that as my one of the ones. But I understand it. I definitely understand it. I would even say I respect it. <laughs> Right. And to be fair, it's not even a why was this made. It's just that it was it, it had it had so many bad moments that it's like I love the film, but like Tina said, I wouldn't recommend it to people. Mm, mm. Yeah, I wouldn't be like, oh, you should go to Sunday Affair. I, I just would not. Yeah, uh, a lot of people from uh, from film club uh, seem to want want the f- film to focus more on on the sis- on the friendship between the girls, and felt like Sunday was just an annoying character and just mm. wasn't interesting, and felt like a bit of a pig, and it felt like he got rewarded for his um, pig behavior. Um, Did I not say this? Did I not say this? Yeah, yeah, you did. I, I literally I, said it's not like we were rewarding bad behavior. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, you did, you did. Well, I didn't, I didn't hate the movie enough to say it shouldn't have been made. <laughs> I feel like they could have just made it better. Mm. Yeah, but um... yeah, no, no, it shouldn't have been made. Just it was, it was quite terrible. A movie that should not have been made, though. Love in a pandemic because. Oh, I... do you know? I you were <laughs> no, to say... I actually like that one. I thought you were going to say big love. Uh, I thought you were going to say. I I th- that. Is it love in a showroom? Is that is that the name of a movie? I can't. Yes, Something... it's love in a showroom. That All is right. the name of a movie that also okay. should not have existed. I that's the one. That one. Okay, that's a Nancy Nancy Isime brother Shaggy love story. That's all you need to know about that. Uh, was it guess... Nancy Isime that was the love interest? Or who? Yes. I can't remember who the love interest was, but I... yes, it's Nancy Isime brother. It was Shaggy. interesting. Yeah. And she was also in love in a pandemic. Yes, that's true. She's uh, she's often stuck in. Oh uh, yes, she in was things. in love in a pandemic. Yeah. But Love in a Pandemic was good. I don't know why you don't like that one. 
Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, bad. I'm, I'm, I'm in between <laughs> you guys there. I'm, I'm straight down the middle with this one. Um, I, I think it could have been better, but I liked a lot of things about it. Yeah, I don't. Even, I like loving a pandemic. I, I got. I, I feel like for what it was, it was really good. What? I also like the fact that they did as much as they were able to with so little. No, I have to disagree. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> it could have done way better. It was too cringe. I cringed the entire movie because that's the point of a TV rom com, though. No, no, <laughs> I don't agree. I'm sorry. I'm, I, I can't. I can't agree with any of this. The movie should not have been made. Like, no. Oh my god. Have to make yeah, make a movie from like you know pandemic whatever. They've done so many pandemic movies, by the way. But this one in particular was was just not nothing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like even the fact that like you it was a pandemic movie. That like you could have done so much from finding love in a pandemic. They they did they did they did too much that was not necessary. I don't know if you understand what I mean. Like what? She was a customer service person. She mistakenly called somebody. They fell in love. Then her boyfriend was cheating on her. They could have just fallen in love. Like, it didn't have to have so many side stories that at the end of the day, mm. had up. And it was just unnecessary information. Even them finding... The way they even found out that there was a pandemic was so unrealistic. You just see people in, like, hazmat suits coming <laughs> out and spraying the, the road. <laughs> like, and they were not looking from the top of their office down. And they're like, it's going to be a pandemic. How do you know? Like, when, when the pandemic started, nobody even knew to be at home for that long. Nobody knew. We're just like, okay, everybody go home. You know, for the first one week, everybody was at home, chilling. And then it became two weeks, one month. And that's how we started. For them, they knew somehow that we're going to be at home for the next few months. We were just... <laughs> I was just like, nah. nah. And then how she found the guy and how they, they started talking and then how they would talk. And then they were, they were still moving around. She wasn't going to visit her boyfriend. She went to the hospital. Who went to the hospital during COVID, please? Everybody was... I mean... Wait, but there was a period where restrictions were lifted and you could move around. I wasn't immediately that she was moving around. She was moving around to go and drop your love fries. Like, <laughs> she did that she, one. Restrictions <laughs> were lifted. Why was she going to? She said they did not that the first time. Please, please. please. No, I, I'm, I'm, for, for me, my biggest issue with love in a showroom was um, I. Um, hey, sorry, loving the pandemic uh, was uh, uh, Nancy Simmons acting. I don't know. There's something I find whiny about e- almost every character Nancy plays. Um, it's just uh, not 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 my favorite at all. Uh, she, I don't. Mm-hmm. I, it, it's 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 a thing she keeps on doing with her characters, where especially like if if someone. You, if she, if she's someone you're supposed to root for, it just almost always has the opposite effect. I'm not sure she knows how to play that lead lead female character at this point. Um, I think she has an idea of how she wants to play every character, and and they always come up as whiny. Have you guys seen um the Ras guy? Yes. Oh, the I've Ras seen guy. half of it. Okay, right. Okay, so the Ras guy for me is a film that. Uh, that starts off well has some good writing in it 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 doesn't land well for me but she's playing this at first right the jeez right (laughs) okay i don't want to turn this into nancy nancy simis segment but nancy simis character should have just been a lovable she's supposed to be a lovable i'm going to be there for you and i don't care Mm -hmm. i don't care what accent you you know what you know what background you're from but I don't know how she interpreted this character as this princess who was going to be the yeah. Disney thing. And the- <laughs> you, know, you know what I think about? Oh Why well, I, I agree with you 110% because I also cringe when I watch Nancy Sima being like this dainty. I think she's trying so hard to be dainty yeah. and sweet. And it's just not yeah. working. Like, yeah, you can I, be a lovable girl without being so dainty. Like she just wants to be so, you know. I'm like, yeah, Sorry. well over the well over the top. To be honest, even when I think, even in something like Obaram, where I think Obaram, she was playing a more um, flawed character. 
Um, uh, yeah. Obviously, guessing Abaram. Yeah. All right. I, I didn't even ask. And Abaram, she's playing a more flawed character, and yeah. that should have. I think it's actually a better performance, and maybe it helps that that character is supposed to be is a bit flawed. But um, mm. when it comes to the arc of, um, you know, changing my ways, I don't know. I just I didn't buy it. I didn't. Mm. I didn't. I didn't buy any any of it from her. She just only works as annoying for me at this point in time. I don't know why. Yeah. Uh, I, um, yeah. But... I think I think in any role that she's not playing um, a damsel, in, well, not necessarily distressed, but a damsel, she she delivers better. Like in um, Blood Sisters. Yeah, because in Blood Sisters she was really good. Yeah, I thought she's I thought she's better in Blood Sisters, yeah. and, and it, it's funny that. Um, I'm trying. I'm trying to remember my first, my first Nancy, the the one that it started with. I think it was Superstar, and um, I think that day on the on 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 film club, I was. I I might have. I wasn't completely alone, but there were people who were like, "Ah, oh, yeah, I don't mind her." But I I don't know. There was something even whiny to me in that character there, where. Almost all the ball was in her court. She had been through bad things, and but like. I, I don't know. It's just, uh, it's probably just her. She's just probably not, she's not, she, I don't know. <laughs> she's just not, not going to. I mean, to be fair, there are, those, there are those people who are just that person for certain yeah. people. Yours is yeah. Nancy Mithi and Itunos is Timini. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh no! I, <laughs> no, I think Timini is a lot of people. Timini is Timini is. Uh, so there's one there's one performance I like from Timini, and that's in his Juju stories character. I say like. Uh, yeah, his uh, Juju stories really character like, was actually good. Yeah, I I like when so like he's cast as a cult boy, um, a bit of a player, like somebody who has it, and I think that's that's the role that fits fits him best in big love yeah. where he's playing some nerdy oh. and uh, yeah romantic no i don't nope i don't nothing about yeah. him at all yeah yeah no i had i had the rant yeah, that, that, <laughs> yeah, that, that was a painful watch uh, yeah I'm, I'm with you I'm, I, so, I, I still haven't finished that movie because yeah. i just right. um, that movie was so painful for me no i i hear you i hear you in that one um it's not it's not it's not my favorite. Okay, so yeah, so we have love in a pandemic, uh, and my okay for me. All, right. all the loves in an anything basically. <laughs> yeah, so I think the Lotana films. I don't know if you ever saw any of them. The Lotana trilogy for me. I think these were all horrible, bad films. Uh, I think it's a young time ago. Hide and seek and love in a showroom. <laughs> They're all. Oh, okay. They're all linked. Yeah. Well, I, I call it the Lord. Tan- we call it the Lord Tanner trilogy. It's just made by one guy, and they they got dropped. Oh, okay. They got dropped back to back to back on on Prime. So <laughs> we we call uh, it the Lord Tanner, Lord Tanner trilogy, but they're not really supposed to be linked. Um, and just made by the same person <laughs> and dropped and dropped yeah. week after week on, on Prime. So, but yeah, they're all they're all they all. I think they're all bad. Very. Oh, oh, some of them are some of them are worse than others. Um, I think a young time ago is probably the most offensive for me, um, just because of what it does with uh, what it does with sexual assault. In that, I I, I really um, not a big fan of that one. Um, hide and seek, yeah. I think, is just it's just a mess, a convoluted mess. But you know, when we do heist movies, uh, very much. Um, it, I prefer I prefer uh, having our heist mm. being a bit more dull and like on um, interesting or like I saw that coming. I prefer that than yeah. the person who was like, "Oh, I'm gonna make you not see this coming," and therefore like it was like because often what that means is that they're just pulling things out of the air, um, and that's yeah. not 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 um, that's just that's just uh, that's just annoying <laughs> um, to watch. Is, and then yeah. uh, and then love in the showroom. Unbelievably, I don't. You know what? I I don't know how to. I don't even know how to land these things. Love in a showroom is just the 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 most low effort. It's just low effort filmmaking. But to be 
fair. <laughs> From the trailer, it was kind of obvious that it was going to be what it was going to be. Like, True. I went into that film with complete understanding of what I was getting. <laughs> True. And that's why we never discussed, we didn't, we never discussed that. I, I never even picked as a film we were going to discuss. It was not, I, I knew from the trailer that it was going to be not a good time, not um, good use of uh, anyone's time. And, you know, I say that and, and we've seen, I've made, I've made, uh, I say I've made, you know, like, because I have to pick sometimes the films we watch or discuss on Sundays yeah. on, on film clubs. So I've made us discuss a bunch of really um, terrible movies. <laughs> but like, I was like yeah. so, some I know from the show, like, no, uh, I'm not going to hear the end of this one. And, you know, there's some things I'm still carrying, you know, like, um, <laughs> There's some films that you know are fun to discuss how bad they are. Um, Glamour Girls was was a fun time. I remember um, that that <laughs> space that space was a fun time. Uh, uh, but but Love in a Showroom is just it's just low level. It's just like there's not a lot of effort in going in it. So like there's not even that many things to hate on. It's just there's it's just yeah. When somebody's barely even trying, um, yeah, it's like all right, it is what it is. Um, yeah. I think I feel like we've discussed this before, but I feel like for me, part of what the problem is is we have um, film being cast with skit makers who aren't technically actors, mm. Mm, yeah. and that reads very clearly in the way they deliver those roles. Yeah, and to be to be honest, I think a lot of uh, especially the good ones. I think a lot of the skit makers are. I think the reason why, because there's, I don't think. I think the 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 line between skit making and and films are are not that huge because in just the sense yeah. that I think a skit maker if you become popular and a good skit maker I think what you you almost certainly are good at is exactly. making people believe your role yeah. as whatever thing you are. So Brother Shaggy had was really good at convincing people he was an Agboro guy in blah blah blah. Yeah. He convinced people that um uh, uh, uh was Lassisi was good in it's good in his own element. And I think one of the be- better people, skit makers, um Lai, who um, yeah, I don't know if you've seen his stuff. His stuff is actually just really. Uh, it's a lot of good writing, and it's like his performance is good. He's just a good performer of his of his of his work. Now, there you can miscast all of these people. Why would you cast Brother Shaggy as a lover as a lead lead role in a romance? Exactly. Uh, like, yes, that's yeah. bound to your your you're setting him up to fail in 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 that role. So. Um, yeah, there's there's ways you can cast these people, um, and you know, like a bunch of stand up comedians, and uh, they, you know, that went up to become big global stars. Eddie Murphy started started in, um, and you know, skit making and stand and stand yeah. up and all of that, and went up to become like you know, you know yeah. Beverly the problem Hills cop. the problem is not necessarily like casting skit makers is like you said like miscasting them and yeah. then yeah don't have range because they're just good in the character that they already portray so you're not going to put like you said someone like brother shaggy as a lover but it doesn't make sense yeah because no, yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah um yeah well uh, i we've had does anybody have any more of the low lights they wanted to put up I mean, we already brushed a big love, oh. but that was my worst. <laughs> like, that was big the love. Movie. A beard and Stephen. Well, it's not a beard and Stephen classic at all. Um, but um, you know, yeah, I said the same thing. I, said thing. I was like, I can't believe that was beard and Stephen because I watched. Oh my god. Predator. Yeah, from the. No, I, but... I think maybe they're trying to recreate the breaded life magic, um, and it didn't work. But he... That's what I I don't I and I think that's my biggest issue with it. I feel like if one thing has worked once, let's not. I know we shouldn't always try and reinvent the wheel, but why do we have to do it a million more times? Yeah, to be honest, and it wasn't it it wasn't even exactly the wheel really. I think one of I didn't even mind again. I think the way Timony was cu- cast in in Breaded Life is better suited to Timony because. Then again, Timini is playing a spoiled person, a spoiled young person who is fighting, and where, 
And honestly, like without an action, I think it's just I like I want to see Timini suffer and carry cement and look like he's not having a good time. Yes, and you know, like <laughs> I want to see it. That's where I can enjoy yeah. Timini. Is like, but like you know, he does have to look. I uh, give him props in that he does have to look like this is not fun for him and you know he's really going through it that i think i can't remember yeah. what it was wheat or cement he was carrying i think he did that part uh, reasonably well um mm. so yes um i want to see him either play the arrogant sport person he is that it's just what makes sense i don't buy him as an earnest lover boy i, ju- I just don't um somebody who is romantic uh, i don't i don't buy that version of him at all and then the other yeah uh, and that's why big love didn't didn't work uh, part of why big love didn't work for me better life uh, which um i I, you know um i i was again the only one of the few dissenting voices for better life i like most of better life but the ending i i can't get on board with because for me um better life it it was all a dream thing it just yeah it rubbishes everything I've just watched because it's not real. The romantic thing that I was invested in didn't happen. That's that's what it feels like and to me. And, you know, people were like, yeah, you know, but like, you know. It's like when he's looking at that, that um, the, the bread, you know, uh, yeah. bread girl, that's not, you know, that didn't happen now. That's just a new, that's just, you know, I... Weird. I buy his transformation. He can, he can, you know, because like he felt all of that. He can now decide he's not, you know, he doesn't want to go down. He doesn't need to be, you know, the sport person is. But my G, you don't know anything yeah. about bread. He wants to make, <laughs> he wanted to start a bakery or some shit. <laughs> After he was like, okay, <laughs> okay. Putting that aside, but like even going to going to up to the babe because I think that's how it ends. He goes walks up to the babe. It's like that didn't happen. You can't start. That's not the person. You're going to start a a relationship with somebody. This is Delulu now. What you're. (laughs) (laughs) But but yeah, that was that was my problem with um, Better Life. But like yeah, I understand why people like like that one. It's either like again you buy into that um, Mm. that or, or you don't, and it then it works for you but yeah big love wasn't wasn't it wasn't my favorite but a lot of things were my favorite this year to be honest um i think uh we, yeah we we got we got ads to make a top five this year of the nollywood thing and honestly didn't i struggled i i i could only make a top two um because really yeah i could only do a top two and there was mami water and the trade and so like when i think of best of the year best of the year for me has to be a film i go yeah, watch it. I recommend it. Um, um, it doesn't. It's a film that I enjoyed a lot, and you know, it might have a bunch of things, but I recommend it. That's what best for me means. I and I didn't have. So you you so you wouldn't recommend the black book to anyone. Oh no, no, no! I would hide the black book uh, in the black book. I would hide the black book in the black. Book. Oh, wow. <laughs> no, um, I I don't like that film at all. Uh, and here's my my reason. Like one of and actually it's it's close to my reason why I don't I don't, don't like something like the blood vessel. The part on the ship is we're good. We're best when we start doing things that only we do. Stories that only we yeah. Have. And the black book is yeah. just borrowing so much from i know immediately and like i know this was not his his intention because he's like it's not oh it's not the john wick but everybody who's seen it is just seeing a worse version of john wick they're they're seeing the he didn't mean for it to happen even the people that you know he's I, I'm tired of I'm tired of it because like you know it it did well uh, on Netflix um, which doesn't mean anything to yeah. me it doesn't mean anything to me in just that I don't know how many of the people who watched it liked it that's all I mean like doing well doesn't yeah you know, it could have just been marketed really well um, all of the all of the sort of places where people rate um, there's nothing that's given me an indication that people love this film um, yeah. uh, it, it did better um, Blood Vessel did better than this film on our NFC score um, it's yeah it's sitting like on a five and a between a five and a six on like Rotten Tomato and and IMDB and Letterbox this is it's it's hanging around that five to six area this is not this is not mm-hmm. 
this is not love for a film so i don't know um it's not something yeah. i would recommend at all especially because i i just yeah. i don't even think it's a i don't think it's a good film i think it had uh, decent you know what I'm saying? I should watch it. It's so cute. Let me go and watch it. Yeah, I literally was like, you know, you have to watch this. And then that's what I text me. It's like, what is this? <laughs> it's produced really well. It's like one of our most well-produced film, I would say. And can I just say, that is probably why I like it. Yeah, probably. That makes sense. It's it's uh, like, it. yeah, it has no mics in it. I can tell you that. <laughs> um, no mics dropping. I just, I love how clean. It is. It's, it's, it, it was just. It was made well. Yes, I. I, I, I yeah. yeah. I, even to be honest, you know, it's it's not like it's not like they're not issues for me with the production. I I think some of the color grading wasn't all that great. Some people find it a little bit too orange. But um, it, my. Uh, yeah, the grade was hit or miss. I will. I definitely agree yeah, to that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then there is. I think there are a couple of explosions that. There's a couple of explosions I thought looked a little cartoonish. Um, yeah. and, and there was yeah. one that looked good. I was like, well, you guys, you just get the guy who did this one to have done, you know, the other two. Um, uh, speaking one, one of, 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 sorry, speaking of special effects, just because I have to bring this film up. Um, oh God, what is it called? The, uh, it's the Femi Adebayo one. Oh, um, Jago Jago or... Uh, King of the- yes. King of Thieves. Yes. Which one? No, no, it's Dragon Dragon. It's Dragon okay. Dragon. So, <laughs> loved it. It wasn't a bad film. However, there are like three scenes that I nearly I wanted to throw something at something because I was like, why? There's a scene, and I really think that this is a QC thing, and it was a last minute. No one saw it. <laughs> As towards, towards the end of the film, you can see the AD walking by with the megaphone in his hand. Oh my god. <laughs> and I remember oh I remember when I saw it. I, I remember help. thinking I was crazy. Oh, it's about an hour and I think fifteen minutes in. Oh my I got I remember seeing it. I remember thinking I was crazy and I definitely didn't see that. So I rewound that scene three times just to be sure. <laughs> And every single time it was there. Wow. Okay. All right. I mean, I remember I seeing. Good movie. But I, I remember there seeing. Was that. <laughs> no, I remember seeing for that one. Um, it was. It was. What was it on the? Oh yeah, it was. So they they had a crane with a camera on. Um, I remember seeing um the shadow of the crane and the camera guy. Um. Oh yeah, it was, it was the it was in the speech on Lat- Latif's character when I think he's yeah. doing his monologue towards the end. Um, yeah, it, it's it was difficult. It's obviously, um, it's uh, obviously one of those midday shoots where the sun is at its highest. So like, um, yeah, it's gonna cast, yeah. it's gonna cast shadows. And they, because they were doing a revolving uh, one of those shots where the camera is going round, um, somebody yeah, forgot yeah. that the sun was gonna was gonna do them dirty there. <laughs> Move around. So, yeah. yeah. Um. So, but yeah, I, I yeah. I, okay. So for, have you seen? Have you guys seen King of Thieves? Is it King of Thieves or Prince of Thieves? It's King yes, of Thieves, right? I have seen King of Thieves. Right. It is right. it is King of Thieves. Right. So it's it's basically the the same. It's basically the same guys in terms of that. I remember for me, I preferred the VFX in there, and I think the VFX in there might be worse. All right. But the reason why I prefer it is that. I think it it's part it just feels like it it works better with the camp because it's a little it feels a little camp that kind of um storytelling cuz like you have all this um you're about warriors and they go into these um, yeah. beautiful poetic monologues where like and it reminds me of kind of like when um I don't know if, whether you've watched old Bruce Lee movies. Sometimes he just stands there and and he's just going, we are. Just he's just, they're just, and he's, mm-hmm. just, he's not even talking. He's just making noises. And I, f- I, when I was young, right, I found this. We used to imitate all those noises, right? Like he used to make a bunch of just weird ass noises, just like you know, just. Um, I don't know whether it was to hype himself up, but they all felt like. Um, poetry but like it felt like an olden day shoot and with those olden day shoots there are things that feel a bit more um, 
for for us like um so the vfx like being a bit more poor felt just more fitting for the film they were telling now in jagger jagger yeah. um they're trying to do more 3d effect um which is more sophisticated than what we saw in king of thieves but yeah it's, it's like for me the, the best way to explain it for me is like king of thieves is outside the uncanny valley and um for me and um for jagun jagun the, the vfx is right in the uncanny valley where it's a little too close to um modern day it's a little too close to just bad VFX from modern day times. And so all I can see is just, oh, this just doesn't look good. Uh, like, it looks like a school, it looks like, you know, something like a, um, a student filmmaker made like five years ago, right? Like where uh, he doesn't have yeah. budget. And like, but that's, that's why. There's I'm... also this <laughs> one scene in that film, sort of the first fight scene, it's kind of like towards the beginning where, I think they call for I I don't remember if they called Ogun or they called Shogun, they called some some god. And it goes from day to night so quickly. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because yeah. the um the ma- the well, whatever she, her character, the other thing that she is comes for. Mm-hmm. And it was just the quick way that it went from okay, the sun's out, it's shining, they've made they've said the incantation to just sheer darkness. Right. It was 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 that the point? I don't know. I can't. I can't remember. Was that the point? Is it supposed to do that? I I don't know. That's the thing. I have no clue if they meant for that to happen. <laughs> yeah. I hope not. Um. The. Yeah. There's one where I think it's when he's his um Latif's character is 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 doing the speaking to the tree when we're getting introduced to his powers to control like wood yeah um they they just freeze frame uh just uh yeah it's just like they throw instead of i don't know i don't know how i guess maybe you shoot it at a higher range or maybe you take pictures instead at the same same um uh at the same position at again at a higher frame rate but like when they froze it this motion blur yeah. on, the, on the falling tree, and <laughs> if you've stopped a tree, I don't think it's gonna have motion blur in it. <laughs> it just, you know, it just feels like you just <laughs> frozen the camera, uh, you know, at somewhere, and you know, yeah, it, that, it, that's what looks that that looks not good. There's just a bunch of things that does don't look good. But for me, the main issue for me in Jagan Jagan was the way the story was told. It was. It felt there was a there was a lot of exposition and the story just um, for me just felt like it was being told then retold and then told and then retold and it didn't it didn't flow well enough for me. There are a couple of things I liked about it, but it didn't work for me as well as um, King of Thieves um, did. Yeah, hmm. yeah. Another movie I wanted to to quickly. Um, no way through trying to convince us that oh my. is a drug oh god alright <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> alright uh, I think I that's one of those ones that I, I did not finish I think we were watching it and I was like alright yeah, I didn't m- finish either <laughs> do you mind do you mind if we do you mind if we go play do you mind if I play some FIFA instead this is so uh, I finished it and I remember I finished it only because for whatever reason that day I was like okay I'm going to watch a movie and I'm going to like to what I think I had to watch the whole thing. And it was interesting. That's all I will say about that. Mm. <laughs> right. It was very interesting. It, 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 even the ending didn't really tie it together in a way that I w- that, that would have made it make sense. Right. Yeah. But no. <laughs> it, it still just was like, okay, so it's over now. Cool. No, uh, all right. I, uh, yeah, I, I hear you. I was going with the right thing. I was, I was just sad. All right. Are you, are you guys familiar with uh, with Naz writing? Who? With uh, I think I think Naz. I think, but he I, he might have co-written it because he tends to do that a lot. Um, Naz, he's the um, he, I think it's the one that wrote Far from Far from what? Far from home. Far from home. Is that Far from home? Yes, he is. Oh well, actually, is he the is he the right? No, he's not even the writer of that. He's the create. I think he's what is he? 
I can't remember what he is in there because like the 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 create the head writer there is Dami Elibu, um, but he's he's I don't know maybe the producer or something. You know, it's a ink blood. It's an ink blood production, but he's written a bunch. He directed it. Okay, okay, yeah, all right. Maybe directed. Yeah, they had like three or four directors. That one, um, which I'm trying to remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm just trying to remember. Yeah, I guess maybe just producer, producer or okay. Um, Naz, Naz, he does a bunch of. Um, he's done a couple of co Blood Covenant. Um, it's um one of his, one of his um works that he co wrote as well. Um, that's another one I haven't finished. I think he wrote the Appreciation, which is his best yeah. work. I think. Oh. Um, which, uh, yeah, was a good one. Was a yeah. movie. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, that's his best work. Um, unfortunately, that's a while ago. Um, <laughs> um, I think that was written by Naz and directed by Ni Akimola. All right. Yeah, but uh-huh. yeah, if you familiar with more of um, Naz's more written, have you seen? Oh, um, uh, the setup too. Yeah, I've seen yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he like wrote. Up. Yeah, all right, he wrote. Which one did you like? One or two? I watched one and I didn't make it, so I'm not watching two. Yeah, all right, two is oh, okay. much worse than one. <laughs> so if you, yeah. like one, <laughs> if you didn't like one, oh God. Yeah, we didn't. Yeah, like I liked one. one. We didn't like one, and um, uh, but like, uh, yeah, we didn't like one. Um, but one is at least well direct. Uh, well. Well, strong, better directed than than two. Um, yeah, I, I think and I mean, I think my 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 liking of one wasn't even really that. Like, I liked it, liked it. It was more just okay. This is a good film. Yeah, it has. I would uh, recommend it, has, it, but it's a good film. It has that nice score that um they they used again in in two. Um, it does have. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I I agree with everyone that it's a nice thing, but yeah, I I think. All the issues we had in from the setup one, they just doubled down on it and did all of it in the setup two. Um, yeah, uh, in the way, just uh, the, the it's way too convoluted. Um, Nas Nas likes a Nas likes a good twist. Uh, so I didn't finish. Um, was this film we were talking about that led? Um, um, no, no way. Was it? Is it no way back? No way through. No way through. Whatever. I, I just. It's funny the way I remember all of this thing Naz does is that it it almost sounds it sounds like the Spider Man stuff. No way home, far from home. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, no way, no way through is um is is uh I I haven't fin I haven't finished it, but I can I can imagine there's a twist in there because my yeah my guy likes he likes his twist. Um, he likes uh, surprising the audience, and I get it. Like you know, sometimes it, it works, but I, I I feel like you know sometimes that that can get you down that later of M Night Sh- um, Shyamalan sort of yeah. period where you're just writing twists for twist sakes and they're just coming out from nowhere, and sometimes it it just becomes an impediment to telling a good but- story. <laughs> I'm even trying to remember if there was a twist. I don't think there was a twist. I think the end was just a little bit. Oh, okay. So he did that oh. and said, "Cool." Oh, all right. No, no, no twist for no way through. Well done. All right. I mean, for me, I don't think it was a twist. If, if that was supposed to be the twist, then yeah, I just it watched... was a bit of an obvious one. Yeah. Well, I just watched Saltburn, so nobody has a mon- monopoly on like uh, obvious, <laughs> obvious reveals and, and twists. <laughs> did you watch? Have you guys seen Saltburn? Oh my god. Um. Yeah, I was... People keep telling me to watch it but then at the same time i've been seeing stuff that i'm just like do i want to do this to myself yeah all right um i i, I yeah hey you never know but um uh, some people really like it i just think it's it feels like it a teenager wrote wrote it it just there's some things there's there's some things that they felt when they wrote there they were like hee 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 you know I was like okay, oh god I'm gonna grow up <laughs> um yeah but and the reveal the reveal is so is so obvious and it's it does the whole flashback thing and you're like wait what <laughs> I thought we already knew this. <laughs> yeah, it does. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, but I'm surprised he 
Well, I'm surprised, pleasantly surprised he didn't he didn't do it. But this this film that came out this week that was um done by Ink Blot it's Ink Blots, right? So it's is yeah, it's still it is. it's still Naz it's Naz's ba- it's Naz's um um I guess production production house. I, I don't know. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Um but uh I, I know he doesn't have writing credits on it so yeah but this one i actually i actually thought this one was it, it had moments it's it's all right uh, it did yeah uh, i i thought it, the, the issues it had weren't particularly to do with um um uh, the, it didn't it, at least it didn't fail in in um in very cliched ways that I felt, I feel like a lot of Nollywood films. Um, it, it at least, yeah, yeah. So ironically, Ituno and I were like, we were gonna watch this one and review it next. And I've, I've watched it so far, and I have a million notes. <laughs> Can't wait to hear on the pod. All right. I'm just like, what is wrong with you people? <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. Well, can I, I just spo- say that I predicted correctly because I'm halfway through. And I knew what happened was going to happen. Oh, really? Okay. Are you sure? Because when you get to the end, you might be a bit confused. Okay, I haven't yeah. gotten I'm just halfway through. So let me not yeah. speak too soon. I I I I predicted something. Um, I wasn't I wasn't right, but I I I got something right. But um, just because I was half right at the end. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. I was I was exactly half right as well. Um, I just I just got the wrong wrong version. But um, I wasn't yeah. wasn't one of those ones where sometimes like you know, <laughs> sometimes like it's not. And I think I can't remember who said this in our. I think it was. Wayne, I think it was Wayne who said this on our space. Um, that and it's right. Is that sometimes um, you don't always have to completely mislead or surprise your audience. Sometimes it's good that they predict the things because it means that you have you have placed the seed in there and it makes sense, right? You don't always want your yeah. twist revealed to be like, well, I didn't completely see that coming because sometimes that just means you just just written rubbish, right? You know, like. Yeah, it doesn't. It might not make sense. So I, 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 you know, without spotting anything, I don't think that's what happens here. Uh, I, but like, um, it's. I don't. I don't think it doesn't make sense. I just. It's not my favorite reveal. It's a little unsatisfying because I don't think there's nothing. I feel like if I watch this a second time, and I'm probably going to because any any time we have a slow. Um, Sunday or so we I'll probably like to talk about it because I think it's an interesting film to discuss um, yeah uh, but, but I, um, if I did watch it I don't think I'd see anything that would point me necessarily in 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 this direction as opposed to some other person's direction right that's I think that's what I feel because I feel like they dropped a bunch of things and I feel like you could have equally gone down any route and it could have been that person. So it just feels a little unsatisfying that that's, that's the one, but like, yeah, it, it's, it's not, it's not the worst. You can see, you can make, you can make, if you follow the, uh, the uh, trail, it, it sort of makes sense. Yeah. So anyway, but that's, yeah. that's for that one. Well, so, um, I mean, like we've generally talked about, uh, um, the ones we, we liked, the ones we don't like uh, uh, from 2023 anyway. We, it was good to talk about, uh, uh, you know, some of, uh, some of uh, well, about the Nollywood Ramblers and I guess Heroku Critic. Um, it so was. Some some people have not asked, um, heard, heard from. So people hear that and hopefully they'll enjoy it. But yeah, but thanks for talking to us. And hopefully um, when Mr. C is feeling much better, we can do this some other some other time. But yeah, we'll, we're we here to hopefully help you keep keep turning in the podcast. Not that you, you need you need any any more encouragement, but we're, we're here to give it to you anyway in case. Definitely. Thank you so much. And it was it was so much fun doing this. We've actually yeah. been looking forward to this. Oh, thank you. As as have I, believe it or not. And Mrs. C, I'm sure she's she's uh, she's getting all of the FOMO, but um unfortunately my brain <laughs> my brain is doing her dirty. I hope she feels better soon. Yeah. Yeah. I'll pass that on. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the episode. If you enjoyed listening and would like to join live, just follow us on Twitter at Iroko Critic 
and join us every Sunday, 6 p.m. West African time on our spaces.